the, the only the only guilt or ple pleasure game I will say I've tried three times and every single time I only get like literally like 15 minutes into it I'm like why am I wasting my fucking time is Alpha Protocol. No, well that can't every suck time. Anyway. That, that's <laughs> that like the Witcher. I cannot get into the Witcher. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! Okay, stop right there. We gotta get back into this. So that's good. Oh All right, my God. Which reaction was just picked up on recording. That sucks. It is. Fuck. I have a <laughs> oh, okay, good. You have to have oh, this in later. I'm oh my God! <laughs> Oh, I just ruined my day. <laughs> well, then, you know what? Let's let's just go right into this since we're already on a hot take now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is why my nerd presents Alpha Beta Gold Games Episode 6. I'm Cameron James, and with me, as always, is just Matt, who's currently in shock. And our guest today <laughs> is none other than JP, who I know from Ecolab. What's Hello. going on? With... Now, well, now I know what's going on. Matt's, <laughs> Matt's in disbelief. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> So if anyone wants to know what we're referencing right now, it's the fact that JP can't get into The Witcher 3. It, <laughs> it's mind-blowing to me. I've tried a couple hours here and there. I've tried maybe eight hours here and there. But it seems like every time I start to get into it, something else comes along. Um, my mistake starting it right when this whole pandemic started was Final Fantasy VII Remake dropped like mm. seven days later. So that's my excuse for this time. Okay. That's just bad time. That's just poor planning. Yeah, <laughs> that's absolutely just... on my part. Oh. You, you both played Final Fantasy VII. I know, I, yeah. I know the first three and a half hours of The Witcher 3, though, like nobody's business because that's all <laughs> I can get through. You really like White Orchard. That's pretty much it. That's, pretty much. That's all you like. <laughs> so you you like you liked Final Fantasy VII Remake. You got more invested in that over The Witcher 3. Yes, just because that was like the first game that I really, really got into back when it was originally released. So okay. on, on the original okay. PlayStation, like I was always like Mario, Sonic, all that generation. But Final Fantasy VII original was like the first whoa game that really did it for me so i can respect that what so in final Fantasy 7 you can change the gameplay you can either do like the old turn-based style right or you can do like the free type thing yeah but it's not so you have like the active battle that the, the more recent ones have done but even mm -hmm. the classic it's not true turn-based there's still stuff happening in the background so it's not like you can have cloud just on an attack command indefinitely before you select it. There's other stuff happening too. Right. Hmm. Matt, you weren't a big fan of it, right? It's not that I wasn't. So I guess my explanation for it, I, I liked Final I didn't play Final Fantasy VII, the original one, right when it came out. I remember like way after the fact, I don't even think I played it until I had a PS2. And then my cousin was like, you really should go back and play this. And I did, and I, I enjoyed it. But with the remake though, my issue was that I got, I didn't finish the remake and I don't intend on going back and finishing it. I was really close to the end. I was probably, I think I watched a, a YouTube video of someone who just, you know, smashed all the cutscenes together. And I watched, it, it, there was no surprise on how that game was going to end. I mean, if you know anything about the fucking game, the way they planned it is like this, this game takes place in Midgar and spoiler alert, it ends with everybody leaving Midgar. Like that's, that was, there should have been no surprise to anybody um, but I just, I, I couldn't, I couldn't finish it cause I just started getting really irritated towards the end because I hate when RPGs say, Hey, we're going to throw you into a fight, but you can only use these two characters and whether you like them or not. And, and mm -hmm. it just, it got really fucking annoying. And I guess I'll say, um, Jason, you know, it will be the fight with, uh, with Aerith Barrett and red 13 right in the, the lobby of Shira yep. tower and i was like you know what this is really annoying and i tried it a bunch of different times specking things out and i just couldn't get through it because it was bothering me so i just said forget it watched a couple cutscenes, and said okay yeah they changed some things but now i know where it's going to end all around though i think the remake was done very well um the combat is incredible but the some of the graphics are a little questionable at times. Yeah. It's like painted on backgrounds. Yeah. I think they could have done a lot better with that. I love how they turned pretty much. I mean, in in the original Midgar took place in what the first. If you really ran through it, five hours. If you took your yeah. time with it, at most about that eight hours. Um, yeah. I love how they turned it into, and I'm sixty hours into it. Um, mm -hmm. I stopped at 60 hours into it and there was still stuff to do if I wanted to 
to go right. back. I didn't complete everything there. So I loved how they turned that first, really like fifth, the first fifth of the game into an entire playthrough. Mm-hmm. So you, Jason, you're obviously going to get the second one whenever the hell it comes out. Yep. Matt, I'm assuming I you're going to. Absolutely. Yeah, listen, really? my, my, my excitement. Yeah, no, it has nothing hmm. to do with me saying, oh, I didn't really like, I just, I got kind of, just kind of tired of it, but my, the excitement for this game will really come in once you're outside of Midgar because there's so much more shit outside of that city in that game that I can't wait to see done in these new graphics. Like taking the submarine and going and fighting the Emerald weapon is going to be fucking mind blowing, I'm sure. And then fighting the Ruby weapon in the desert, like all these super bosses and just going to all these crazy places. That's what I'm excited about. I'm curious how much. Play. I'm curious how much actual open world is going because the the original one was three discs. So I'm curious if mm-hmm. they're separating this into three games. I'm curious how much actual op- will you get a true open world outside of Midgar, or will you get a limited world where you can go anywhere, but it's not the full map. And that's I feel like or you that's can't probably certain things. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be like the safest option for them because if they try to make the open world like just you know the way that the first game was it's going to be too much i think they will have an open world and then when you go to visit some of these other cities maybe it will be more like the original where you go into a city and it is just a finite amount of space that you can visit within that area and then that's it and then spend folk i mean for the most part the the world in final fantasy 7 is mostly empty you just you go from here to this city you go to this dungeon or this forest whatever but i think they can put a lot of work into it and that's that's what i'm excited about for the next one or two or eight games. I don't know how long this is going to be, but that was my next question was, do you guys think it's going to be two more games to follow the three discs? Or do you think it's going to be one more game? Cause if you want my honest opinion without getting spoilery in it, I, I didn't play the game. I'm not really a final fantasy guy. It's not really my thing. Uh, I know the whole story. I know everything about it. I was personally surprised by how they ended um, this, this uh, I guess part one, if you want to say, mm-hmm. I thought they were going to end part one with, without me getting into spoilery about it with, that thing that happens yeah that's what i thought was going to happen i thought they were going to end that is that going thing. to rip me apart <laughs> rip me apart i mean i feel like most people know what we're we're talking about and if you're not familiar with the series then i guess you know you're you're living in a you're living in a post that scene world that's been around for 20 plus years and i mean spoiled you everyone. you've seen you've seen memes <laughs> about it you know what yeah. it is yeah but we we can we can keep it quiet but yeah I, I don't know. I mean, I think I always figured they were just going to be them walking out of the city in some very dramatic fashion. And that's exactly what it was. I mean, whatever, but I'm, a, just, uh, I'm more excited about everything else. Speaking about the memes, actually my favorite 2020 meme is that it's a picture of her. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, this is this is what happened everybody coming into 2019 or 2020 super happy and then that's yeah. just that's COVID-19 yep. dropping, <laughs> dropping so, from- so what I thought was interesting was I was listening to the uh, Kind of Funny podcast they were ranking the uh, they were going to someone made a bracket and they were doing like the, the 72 or the top uh, PlayStation exclusives PS4 exclusives of all times and uh, the one guy on the show uh, Blessing says Final Fantasy 7 remake is his game of the year over the last was part two. And I was kind of surprised by that. <laughs> Jason did beat last was part two. So we can yeah. briefly discuss it uh, quickly if yeah. we had to, but I, I don't, I don't see how final fantasy seven could be argued that that's better than last was part two. Granted, I have my issues with last was part two. Um, As do we all. You know, especially, yeah. like I said, especially the midway point when they make the, the flip and you have to play spoilers. Uh, turn this off for five minutes if you're listening to this or just fast forward it. Or I'll wave my hand when it's over. Um, is when you have to switch to Abby. I didn't like it. I said it to Matt on the spoiler show. I was not a fan of it. I couldn't connect to it. I I, I never I never gripped to her character, even at the end. And I know, like, reading articles, like, the ending was supposed to be uh, Ellie is supposed to kill her was the original way they did it. And they thought that was too dark for some reason. And, and can I just, can I cut you off there for a second? I love how that's considered really crazy, elaborate journalism by posting this article that says the last of us at one point had a much darker ending and she killed that's, that's super, that's really dark. No, I mean, this entire <laughs> game is about you fucking killing people and that's considered dark. No, 
Like I can think of things that would be way darker than that. I don't think that's dark at all. I, think I agree. That, that would have been, that would have been what I thought was going to happen. And then when it didn't happen, okay, but it doesn't make it any less darker of a, you know, an ending, I guess. Shit. So, <laughs> I, I got, I had two issues with the game as a whole. One, mm-hmm. I don't like that in the end, I genuinely felt sorry for Abby. Um, after mm-hmm. seeing the similarities, and I, I know you two discussed this um, on a previous one, the similarities between Ellie and Le- um, uh, Abby and Lev, and then Joel and Ellie. Um, at that, at the end, I generally felt bad for Abby. Um, I, I did also, too. I did. Uh, no, I'm with you. No, I'm with you. In, in a I was small way, I cousin. felt yeah. bad for her. Um, yeah. And the whole way that Ellie handled the whole revenge thing, I did not see that as Ellie. I did not see Ellie. Um, I, I didn't picture her character as that. And especially from for as much time as I spent in the first one, I played that one through three or four times, complete start to finish. Um, I still have that image of Ellie. And to see the it, granted things change and the world is always changing around her. And she saw some pretty dark shit. Um, so that changed her. But I, the whole way that she was just revenge, revenge, revenge. Eh, you know what? Let her go. Revenge, kill her. Nah, let her go. That mm-hmm. kind of like back and forth, that kind of like turned me off a little bit to the ending. I agree. I I, I, I think you nailed it on that one. Again, I never felt sympathy for Abby. I didn't like playing for her when I remember we, when I first picked up, I said it in the last show or two shows ago. I was like, I just wanted to end. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for two hours. I'm good. And then when I kept going and kept going and kept going, you know, Matt and I even said it. Uh, you know, when you have to fight at uh, Ellie as Abby, I let Ellie kill me like 30 times. Oh, yeah. I was oh, like, maybe there's a did. loophole. I was like, maybe there's Lots a loophole. of experimentation of getting like kicked down <laughs> onto your knees as Abby, and then just Ellie comes up and just point blank shotguns you in the face. You get a yep. sick sense of enjoyment out of it, and then it's like, okay, I've had enough of it. Let's let's keep moving yeah. on with I the did plot. at least seven or eight times. At yeah. Least. yeah. Just, I mean, just brutal deaths. Yeah, I, I don't think they need to make another one. We've said it before. I think I think they're yeah. good at where they are. I mean, if they do make another one, they they I mean, you guys can take my idea if you want, if you like it. Like maybe make Abby like, or Ellie like the freaking super bad guy. I don't know. Make her turn run a city or something like that. And you play somebody else, you find her and she's like a psycho. I don't know. What take my idea. I think it's cool. Well, I was I was <laughs> talking with my cousin the other day because he just finished it and I said, you know, it might be not such a I would and I know you're gonna hate this, Cameron. So you're our, I'm just gonna already say Cameron's out on this idea. They make a lost legacy, like an uncharted lost legacy type game that maybe shows you what happens to Abby and Lev after they get on the boat and they fuck off. I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree with you on that. I, w- I would play that. That would be OK. But I don't think I need another like I want closure with that. Just kind of just see what happened. Mm-hmm. But then that's it. I don't I don't need another full, you know, 50 hour adventure necessarily. So okay. that would be that'd be fun. I think that would be cool to see that. So. Well, only, only time will tell. So, Mm -hmm. but I guess before we move on, everybody, I know Matt and I are playing Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. Jason, you're playing Far Cry 5. Ooh. It was on sale. (laughs) (laughs) It was on sale. And I know the sixth one is coming out soon. I just, and you know what? I I enjoyed Far Cry 3. Uh, I think everyone did. was good good for what it was. Um, Yeah. Uh, I'm at the point now. I just did like the first. If it's bro- if it's truly broken into thirds, where each of the kids is like a different third of the game. What kid you I, fight first? John. Oh no. God! And, Congratulations. Uh, That's where the game ends for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know That's, That's where I hate it. Probably where the game is ending for me too. I haven't picked it up in three days, and I I just That's I haven't. It. You're already to. out. I'm far, you'll I'm pick it up again out. for like a little yeah. bit and then you'll go, no, nah, I'm good. And then you'll, you'll try to fight the other, the one brother. And then you'll go, no, I'm definitely out. No, the All sister's right. the worst. The sister the is the shit. worst. I, I, I'm shit. finding I have all those songs stuck in my head now. Like I'm driving around to like account <laughs> to account and I'm just thinking of like, I'm, I'm thinking of like when I go up to a compound and that freaking song just plays over and over and I cannot get it out of my head. That's uh, that game, man. That, I, I always say it, it had so much potential, but it just fell short with the supernatural bullshit. Like, God, I hated that. Yeah. And it's what, weird. What What's up with this, like, weird alien artifact collect this guy? Does that, is that just like a one-off thing there? Or is that throughout the whole? No, it's, I think it's just No, it's it. Okay. That was like, like what the hell? 
Yeah. Yeah, I get I get that the there, you know, it's like I guess it's mostly like a drug. It's some kind of acid trip thing. But like if you're gonna put me into an acid trip, just let me trip and not have to fight a boss fight where I'm fighting God. Like I, I know they did that in, in Final Far Cry three, like where you take like the mushrooms the and shit at one point yeah, and you just have point. like a weird, like oh, like a trippy thing, and it's like, okay, that was fun. I don't need to fight a, a fucking god floating around with a gun. It's stupid. I hated it. It was the worst. <laughs> Yeah, it was God. it was bad. Um, as for Ghost Tsushima, I I know last week I kind of had my mixed feelings about it. Uh, I retract everything I say. Uh, I think this game is fucking unreal. I was playing it the other day and I was like, wow, I felt like chills. I was like, wow, is it like fall outside? Walk outside, it's blistering 100 degrees. But this game has pulled me in like nothing I've played in a very long time. And if you want my honest opinion, I might say it's better than The Last of Us Part Two, in my opinion right now. I'm, I'm definitely, I guess I would, I would say like, you know, I have my, you know, emotional investment in, in the characters in the last of us, but this is, this is something that I, I thought I would like this game, but I didn't think I would like it as much as I am. Like I've spent, the major- I, I've put probably like 20 hours into this game and I only just got like into where you pass over into what is the Northern yep. part of, of Tsushima. Um, I, I spent 20, I just fucking get on my horse and I ride around and I find shit. I'm cutting bamboo mm-hmm. sticks to get things. I'm finding shrines. I'm just doing that. Like, I, I love it. This game is fucking beautiful. Yeah. I Everything just, about this game. I just passed the same part, literally the same spot, but I went back to the first, the Southern region. Cause I didn't fully complete it. Yeah. That's so I'm, I'm not done there yet. <laughs> yeah. So I'm going around, I'm trying to get like the key. I guess if you get like six keys, you get some sort of armor. From... I've literally been doing that all morning. All right, where, you're going so, yeah. you get the, where you rescue the hostages to get the yep. suit of armor. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing that all this morning. So once it's, we're done, I'll be going back. Yeah. It's, it's fucking sick. I also did my first, uh, one hour of, uh, ring fit adventure and that's no joke. That is no joke. I actually was like sweating, having heart palpitations on it. And the thing is, I did <laughs> I did it for an hour, but in the game, it only clocked at 20 minutes. I'm like, Jesus Christ. It's like, you need to take a break. I'm like, yeah, thanks. So I <laughs> no stopped. <kidding. laughs> so I stopped. Uh, Jason, what are you going to go on to next? Do you know yet or no? Uh, no idea. I think I might go back and try to get the platinum for The Last of Us 2. Um, it's an easy one. Yeah. Um, other than that, I have no idea. I have probably between digital downloads and physical games, 20, 25, I haven't even started yet. So you got okay. some catching up to do, I guess, on yeah, that yeah. end. Yeah. Yeah. Some money. <laughs> so, but once again, this is why am I nervous since Alpha Beta Gold Games. You can follow us on Instagram at why am I nerd official, Facebook.com slash why am I nerd, and listen to new episodes every Monday on YouTube or your favorite podcast service. So this week we are going to be d- discussing first and foremost the Xbox showcase, um, which I was not really too surprised by what they did and what they showed off. Um, I think they did what they needed to do. Uh, just a quick recap of the game that they did show off, which I actually didn't see all of these. I only saw a few of them. Uh, was Halo, Halo Infinite, Fable, mm-hmm. uh, Senua Saga, so Hellblade 2, Avowed, which was Obsidian's new game, uh, Forza Motorsport, State of Decay 3, which I was kind of surprised by that one, uh, Crossfire X, Warhammer 40k dark tide uh fantasy star online 2 medium the gunk uh te- tetris effect connected stalker 2 which i was fucking Whoa. actually wait what stalker 2 I didn't, I didn't fully tune i didn't fully tune into the the, the show yep. so i didn't know about that one stalker 2 uh, destiny 2 psychonauts 2 as dusk falls grounded the outer worlds which was just an expansion uh tell me why everworld Balan Wonderworld, Hello Neighbor 2, which I didn't play the first one, but it looked kind of like a, a Little Nightmares game. Uh, Eco Generation, Watch Dogs Legion, Exo Mecha, Dragon Quest 11 S, and then just stream settings. So um, I think the big thing that threw me off here was obviously the Stalker 2. I talked about it last week. I love that game for PC. I would actually consider if that game scored well, getting an Xbox One just to play that game. Or Xbox, whatever the hell they're calling it. Yeah. Um, the X. Uh, but what did you guys think? Do you think they pulled it off well? Or you kind of like just, eh, they did their thing. Like, was there anything that maybe kind of sparked your interest? Or are we all kind of still sticking with the PlayStation 4 or 5 uh, retrospective things? Absolutely PlayStation. 
Matt? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I was, I don't know who I was. I was talking to Vitaly about just some of the, the things. I mean, Fable's cool. I know we, 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 you and I texted Sean and it was like, he's like, oh, well, fuck. I think I might have to get an Xbox because he wants Fable so bad. But I really didn't tune too much into the show. So, I mean, a lot of the games clearly that they talked about are more or less just games that we already some new some new intellectual properties and then other things but my biggest thing the only thing that i was really interested in seeing the news about was was halo infinite and it made me feel like a kid again seeing the trailer because it does feel more like halo than the last two or a couple of i felt it feels more like a halo game than four and five did it feels like you know like the originals and even the cover art for it looks like combat evolved the first one it does but it, they, yeah i'll give you that it's crazy um but the graphics, I'll say that I, I'm gonna. I know I was talking to you about the graphics, and I was like, eh, the graphics don't really look good. But I have to give them. I gotta backpedal that and give them some, give them some benefit of the doubt because I somebody had posted on a, the subreddit for Halo. They showed a picture of Gears of War Five, the demo side by side with the final product of the graphics, and they were night and day different. So I would assume that. And they even said too that the Halo Infinite demo is clearly a work in progress. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. It didn't look as great as I was expecting it to, but the gameplay and just what I saw feels more like Halo than it has in a long time. And I, I would love to play it, but I still can't justify spending that much money for just one game. Now, if Fable's good and, you know, Stalker is good, then I, I, I could potentially get into that ballpark, but it's just not um, not enough. But I think I think overall, just from what I did see, I think they had an okay show. I mean, they they showed off more new stuff than just sequels, which is cool. And I mean, I think PlayStation kind of did too with their show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, I you said last week that Hell Hellblade Two is only going to be temporarily on. Yeah, Xbox. Microsoft's always about using special color, colorful, flowery language in terms of exclusives. I, I don't. Maybe that is an exclusive, but I, I don't see that being a permanent only Xbox exclusive. That was the way that with the first one, and they said, yeah, it's an exclusive. And then like a year and a half or whatever after the fact, it was like, hey, it's coming out on PlayStation. So I feel like it will be coming to PlayStation at some point, and I will play it. And I know so. this this Crossfire X game, uh, I guess, is co-developed by Remedy, which I was kind of by um, surprised by as well. But uh, mm-hmm. I guess it's some sort of free-to-play multiplayer first-person shooter thing. I I don't know. I mean, Fantasy Star Online too. Uh, it is what it is for me. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I think like you say, I think they kind of got their point across and did what they had to do and showed what they wanted to show. And uh, I mean, the Outer Worlds getting a DLC, you know that that's not going to just stick with Microsoft. Maybe temporarily, but probably not forever. <laughs> Get a little bit of feedback there. Yeah, is that is that you, Jason, or is that me? Uh, no, I did. Everybody, that was weird. I think we're good. Yeah, now. it was weird. Yeah, I think we're okay. Um, Jason, did you did you pull up the article? I sent it over in that chat. Uh, yeah. Hold on one sec. I just said if you wanted to, you know, if you had anything to say about it. I know, like I said, we're all pretty much uh, PlayStation guys here. Um, like I said, if if don't get me wrong, I, I've always kind of had both systems at one point, and I've always found myself selling the xbox so the only time i really really used xbox was the original xbox i've had the 360 i had the xbox one um they were sold pretty quick um Mm -hmm. my two or two of my favorite games were knights of the old republic and then the the Mm follow-up not not so much the follow-up that was yeah it was much better um, but that was the only reason I had an original Xbox. And then, uh, you know, I bought like a 360 bundle use. I, I got a Xbox one with a couple of games on it, but never really got into it as much as I did PlayStation. I always found out that I would sell them within, you know, sometimes two or three months. I think the Xbox mm-hmm. one I kept for eight months. Yeah. I mean, we'll see. Like I said, ho- hopefully I think the big thing everyone's just waiting on is like the pricing of these things. Like nobody has any idea. And it just feels like both parties, you know, everyone's kind of saying it. I'm not the first person saying it's like both parties are kind of like waiting, like who's going to pull the trigger first and who's going to announce their price tag. It's not like, and even granted, do I think that if, if Microsoft goes first and says, Hey, the Xbox, you know, X one X is going to be, um, 
uh, 500 bucks and the other one's going to be this smaller model is going to be 350. Do I think that that means PlayStation is going to be like, oh, you know what? We're, I don't think they're going to retract their pricing person. I think that both parties know where they have to be at. And I think both parties know where, where they're going to be at. I think they already have the price set. I just think they're just waiting for someone to say, hey, this is what it is. And the other person can figure out a way to do it. Because, you know, if Xbox does, or Microsoft, I'll say, puts out these two machines where one is supposed to be not as powerful as the newer one. And, you know, the rumor is it's supposed to be like 350. Um, first of all, does that mean it's pretty much just the Xbox one uh, just upgraded? Like barely? So then like it's it's, it's kind of like know, a pro. That's, that, that's, that's, yeah, it's basically just like, a, yeah, well, I mean, that's what the, the Xbox one X is. I mean, that's why there's just so there. I, I, that's, it's so hard to keep track of their fucking models because their yeah. naming is just so fucking stupid mm-hmm. xbox one x x series x it's just yeah i mean it, what is it is it just a slight improvement over the xbox one x which then at that point like you might as well just get i don't know just that that price tag just pay the extra money just get the fucking the new one just get yeah. the, the, the newest one i don't know what else to say yeah fucking i mean weird. i i do think that obviously the only the only ground that playstation kind of has i would say uh tab two different price tags is obviously one has a disc drive and one doesn't. And I think, I mean, just based on hardware facts, I'm assuming the one with the disc is going to be more expensive. Unless Marginally. That's really it. It won't, it's not a, it's not going to be a massive difference. The price tag will be, I would say a hundred dollars less than the, like the disc list for the disc drive list version, the digital one will be at most $100 less. And I think that's pushing it. It doesn't cost them $100 to put a disk drive in there. It costs them like $28 or some shit. So I would say it's probably going to be more like 50 Hey, I mean, if it's $100 less, that's that's a good chunk of change, man. Because you got to figure, you know, in in a scheme of things, if you have a, um, the, the disk, you know, the one that's just without the disk, you're making more money Essentially, you could argue because every first party game you produce, you're not spending that person's not buying the physical copy, which means you're not you're saving money on producing the physical copy one. You're just getting the straight download, which is essentially you're getting maybe ten dollars more. But it adds up at the end of things. If you think about it, it does. But I mean, it won't be more than one hundred dollars. That is for certain. Any any speculation of it being more than that, I think, is probably wildly off base. I mean. Um, just so it, wouldn't make sense to be like, yeah, we're going to have one that's, and this is $500, but you could get the digital one and it's only 300 and it doesn't make sense. It would, it would be selling it still at a loss. So, so are you guys going to go with, the with the disc drive or without Jason? With, with the disc drive. Yep. I like the option. Matt. I'm still mostly on the fence, but I would say it's leaning towards just digital because I don't really. In terms of the only other thing I could think of would be watching movies, but anything I watch movies wise would be digital anyways. I'm streaming it somewhere. So I feel like they'll also probably offer a peripheral at some point where you can buy like a USB disk drive that you can just plug it in or something to that effect. Mm. And if I really want to watch movies that bad and start buying discs again, I can just get a, you know, and a Blu-ray player. If I really wanted, you know, an ultra HD Blu-ray player, I could just buy that separately, but it's, I don't, it's not really going to affect me. I mean, the majority of my time on this current generation has been digital anyways. So it's nothing new. Fair I'm enough. also really curious to find out how they finally figure out the, any sort of backwards compatibility. Um, will it be, mm-hmm. like if I want to play a PS4, the majority of my PS4 stuff is on physical discs. So, mm-hmm. I mean, granted, I, it's all linked to an account, but, you know, it just, the, the peace of mind, I like having that physical option. Yeah. I, I think it's probably, it's probably easier for them to do it, to do backwards compatibility, I would assume, digitally, because you're not emulating a disk drive. I remember that was like the kind of the problem for the PS3 mm-hmm. at one point. Remember, wasn't like the first, the first version of PS3 had like the emulation ability to emulate a PS2 or some weird shit. And then yep. they remade yeah. it and it couldn't, I, that was. Yeah. That the was original, the, the, the big versions, the slim down yeah. ones lost that. Yeah. And I yeah. think it was only like one capacity of the original. Wasn't it only it was like. The, it was the 80 gig uh, that had like, it was the 80 gig. I 
think it was the 80 gig. Uh, yeah, the 80 gig was like two USB drives or something like that. It was a very specific, like, you yeah. can only do it with this one. Any other version is not capable of doing it, which was just from a design standpoint was kind of stupid. You should have been all in or all out on that. I mean, Agreed. but Sony Sony learned to learn their mistake with the PlayStation 3 it launched, so... Well, it'll be exciting to see. Like I said, hopefully, I know there was a rumor last week they were supposed to announce the price tag, but that never happened. So hopefully sooner than later we get something. Um, yeah. But uh, moving on here, this comes from IGN. This is pretty much the upcoming PS4 and PS5 games. Um, what they're considering is the video game release dates of the biggest console games of 2020 and beyond. We're just going to say 2020 for now. Uh, and it doesn't look too big to me. So um, you pretty much have destroyed all humans, which is, July 28th, July 28th, or on July 28th, you have Destroy All Humans, Skater XL, whatever that is, uh, Immortal Realms, Vampire Wars, and Christ Tale. Uh, in August, you have Fast and Furious Crossroads, which I, sure. Whatever. Uh, PGA, whatever. PGA Tour, Tour 2K21, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Remastered, Madden NFL 21, Wasteland 3, and Descenders. Uh, in September, we have Ari and the Secret of the Seasons, Marvel Avengers, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, Kingdom of Amalur, Mafia uh, Definitive Edition, Monstrum, and RPG Maker MV. Uh, in October, we have Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, Star Wars Squadrons, Dirt 5, FIFA 21, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga, Transformers Battlegrounds, Watch Dogs Legions. In November, we have 13, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Christ Tales, again, I don't know why, uh, Cyberpunk 2077. So, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I, I think that the, the rest of the year, if assuming nothing else is announced, it's not too big. There's really, I mean, for me, I, you have obviously, uh, I keep saying it, uh, Kingdom of Amalur, uh, Re Reckoning, September 8th. I will be buying that. Um, I, I'm intrigued by the Mafia Definitive Edition, if it, you know, but I will write for reviews on that. Uh, and then besides that, uh, I thought 13 looked pretty cool. Uh, I like the whole, it's kind of like that cell shaded. Uh, well, it's 13 is a remake or yeah. a remaster. It's not a, not a new game. I almost, I was remake. trying to find the original one for the GameCube, but I couldn't find mm-hmm. it anywhere. It's like really hard to find. Uh, it's kind of like that so. comic book looking thing, which I thought looked good. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. And then, you know, for me, it's Cyberpunk 27, 2077. So yeah, there's, there's about five games, but I mean, the rest of the year doesn't really look that, packed stuff i mean what, what are you guys kind of thinking about this i mean marvel avengers i'm waiting for reviews i'm probably out on that one there's not um, there's none of those games i would jump at to get day one um uh, cyberpunk yeah Get the fuck out, dude. Get yeah, out of here. Why, okay. Between that and the Witcher, wow. dude, you're dead strike too, man. Holy <laughs> okay. So why? I would, uh, I would give uh I would give Assassin's Creed Valhalla a shot. Um I like the the premise of the games. Um Crash Bandicoot I played the original one and I, I enjoyed it. Um I mean this is how many years ago was that? Yeah. Um I enjoyed it. And I, I would give that one a shot if it went on sale or if I didn't have anything else going on. Um, I mean, the rest of this year, though, is it's going to be weird. I'm either going to be exceptionally busy for what I do or depending on what happens with a with this resurgence, I'm going to have a ton of free time on my hands. So who uh, who knows? I want to know why you're not excited for cyberpunk because you're like the first person that's kind of like I've heard that's like not like, yeah. Is it because you don't like you don't like The Witcher 3? Like, Maybe. What's- I, it, it's not that I don't like The Witcher 3. I enjoy the game. It's just I can never get really into it. It always seems like something random happens, like, you know, Final Fantasy VII Remake release. Um, before that, it was... <laughs> I wouldn't call the Final Fantasy VII remake random. That was definitely situated and planned. And yeah, you no, you was, made a bad was, choice starting it like three days before. Yeah. That so came okay. Out. So not random. It was it was a bad choice on my part starting it <laughs> eight days before launch. Terrible idea. Terrible idea. Absolutely. <laughs> idea. I, I I'm like dumbfounded that you're not on the the cyberpunk bandwagon. Nah. 
I mean, I'll, I'll give it a shot. I'm going to follow it. I'm going to look at it. I just don't think I would get it like day one with everything else going right now. I mean, I, I, I think, so the issue I'm having right now, as I've said this before, is uh, I have the older PlayStation 4 Pro. Matt says I just need to clean it. I don't think it's just that. Like, my fan is super loud, so, like, I constantly have to have headphones on. Well, no, that's it. that's a combination of two things, not to get super technical. But, yeah, you probably need to fucking clean it, so take the top cover off and look at your fan blades and see if they're covered in dust, dummy. But the other yeah. thing is, is that, no, there was a market issue with when the pros came out. They used a different brand of fans. Um, I think it was the Nidec brand fans. They said that they were they were naturally like louder than the, mm. the current fans. I can't remember what brand it is, but you might just have a combination of both. You might have the Nidec fan and your shit's taken <laughs> dust. So you can at least meet yourself halfway and try to clean it. Who knows? Maybe you crack it open and it's crystal. You know, it's just it's fine in there, and then it is just a fan, and then you got to deal with it. But yeah, take the cover I, I, off. It takes thirty seconds. You could probably do it right now. Like, I pulled a freaking quilt out of my P, uh, PS4 one time. Oh, I, really? okay. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, it was it was will, a I'll it was it a later. good clump of stuff. Yeah, like when the fan is dirty, because then there's also like you gotta try. Like I mean, if you really like break it apart, the heat sink in there. But yeah, the heat sink probably is caked in dust too. But at least you could just try to get get a get the cover off, get a compressed air can, and just fucking blow it out. Just try to get as much as you can out of there. Um, that'll certainly help. So then on the topic, as we said before, you mentioned Final Fantasy VII. This uh, Crystal Chronicles remaster is pretty much a remake from the GameCube game, it looks like. I have it pulled up here. I never played it. Um, they were fun. It, it kind of looks like almost like a like a Dragon Quest type thing. I would say more the, like, um, like the way, like, a, yeah, almost I think more like, like Diablo. Is it really? Like a, like a, kind of. I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm just misremembering it, but it's been a long fucking time since I played the, the Crystal Chronicle games. But they're they were fun. I remember enjoying them. Is a it little tr- bit more oh. like a cutesy Final Fantasy. Okay, it is. The, it's like that isometric top down view is what I'm looking yeah. at. Uh, I thought it was. Is it was it turn based or no? Was it kind of a play like Diablo? I can't recall. I, that's why I feel like it was. I always like. I I feel like it was more like Diablo. I'm just gonna like look, look up that real quick. Uh, Wasteland 3 I tried to play the second one It was way over my head uh, I was like this is like way too much Managing whatnot. not um, Marvel Avengers Again I, I haven't been Really blown away by what I've seen on it I hope it does well I hope it you know surprises me And, and does what everyone kind of hopes it's going to do But um, you know it, it reminds me a little bit of Destiny 1 Where it had all this like hype kind of thing And like had all these great plans And like Destiny 1 I kind of felt like didn't really execute On what it exactly said it was going to try to do So um, Maybe these guys can learn a little bit From from them And then uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 I'll probably get that when it goes on sale as well Just for old yeah. cool nostalgia reasons Yeah for good for some memories Yeah that should be fun um, and like so, other than that, man, it's it's a pretty quiet rest of the year unless someone pulls off some uh, some random ass shit. And then pretty much just the games that uh, from PS4 and PS5 games that still have that still have that have been announced that they're going to be released. It's on release dates are Astro's Playroom, which I, they said was going to be packaged with the PS5, uh, Bio Mutant Bug Snacks, Death Loop, Demon Souls Remake. Uh, Destruction All Stars, Dying Light, Elden Ring, to- uh, Ghostwire Tokyo, Godfall, Gods and Monsters, Goodbye Volcano High, Grand Trees 7, Grand Theft Auto 5, the PS5 version, Hitman 3, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Jet, uh, The Far Shore, Kenna, uh, Bridge of the Spirit, Little Devil Inside, NBA 2K21, No Straight Roads, Odd World Soulstorm, Outriders, uh, Pragmata, Project Athia, Project Cars 3, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet and Clank, Rift Apart, uh, Remothered, whatever the hell that is, Resident Evil Village, Returnal, Sackboy, The Big Adventure, uh, Scarlet Nexus, Solar Ash, Spider-Man, Spider-Man Miles Morales, System Shock Remastered, which that was kind of surprising, uh, Tales of Eris, uh, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Quarantine, which I'm assuming they're going to change the name on that, uh, Trails of Cold Steel 4, Twin Mirror, Vader Immortal, which I could, I'm not a big Star Wars guy, but I might invest in that. Uh, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Anything on that list of upcoming that anyone's looking forward to besides Biomutant? 
I mean, well, that's 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 like everything that's been announced. But I thought you were reading that off like, yeah, these might be. That's like ninety five percent of those games are not coming out anytime within the next year. I would imagine. You don't think so? so? so fuck no! Like Horizon Zero Dawn isn't coming out probably for at least another year. That's not going to be a launch title. That's probably not even going to be a launch window title. I would imagine. They said they were like twenty twenty one, and they were very specific, just like twenty twenty one. That's probably like fucking summer next year at the earliest. There's no way that's coming out in like February. I don't know. January. I think I think a lot of these games have a chance to come out next year. Astros I, Playroom, obviously. Bio Mutant. Well, that Astros thing feels like Playroom. Well, well, d- if Astros Playroom is going to be preloaded on PS5, then it's a fucking launch title, right? But I mean, Demon Bio, Souls Bio, is definitely not coming. Bi- Bio Mutant. That game's been rumored for fucking ten thousand years. That game's not coming out at all, <laughs> and it's going to suck. It's probably going to be fucking terrible. Demon Souls is definitely not coming out in 2021. Would be my Deathlo- first Deathlo- guess. I would say Deathloop is probably, but not not within the first see, six months. I think you would see Gran Turismo Seven at launch because that's kind of like a play that would make sense. Sony thing, yeah. you know, they've done that'll all- show off the hardware and the graphics yeah. and yeah, hundred percent. That God I falls, can agree. That's God falls supposed to be this year. I don't know. And then um, we'll see. I mean, yeah, I mean, Dying Light, I don't know what the fuck that's all about. I thought they were done with that, but who the hell knows? Forget so. that game because you're just going <laughs> to keep disappointing yourself. So let's just pretend that that's not a thing anymore. All right. Other than that, uh, Resident Evil Village, I'll be hopping on that. So we'll see. Again, it's, uh, it's only it can only go up from here. It can only go up from here. But uh, last but not least on our list is going to be a uh, PlayStation 5's next state of play is rumored to be August 6th. So what would we like to see is my question from the next PlayStation five event, Jason pricing. Um, and going back to what we were talking about a, a minute ago, um, an absolute drop dead release date for horizon zero dawn for the West. Uh, but definitely pricing. I would love to see that. Um, you were a horizon fan. I did. Oh yeah. I love that game. I, I have. Oh, loved it. Um, slow starting. I probably have, I think it took me and I spent a lot of time just like exploring and pretty much looking at every single square inch of that open world. Um, I think I have like 110 hours into it. Um, wow. I'm a bit long before that, but just kind of like spent a, lot, spent a lot of time walking around and just, you know, sniping stuff. Yeah. Matt? Um, I'm pretty simple. Fucking give me a price tag for the PlayStation Five. Tell me when it's coming out, and tell me exactly when I can pre-order it. That's it. You're, you're getting everything it else is just. I'm almost well. Okay, me getting me getting it on on launch day all depends on being able to pre-order it. Because if they say hey, because they said that they were like, listen, there were rumors that there was just going to be this. They were just going to randomly. All of a sudden, they were just, PlayStation was just going to tweet out like, "Hey, you can pre-order it." A surprise, go out there, and they said, "No, that's that rumor is total bullshit. Where it's not going to be just a a drop it on you surprise." They're like, "We're going to tell you when you can pre-order it. You're going to have time to like get your shit together and get your bank account squared up so that you can make that pre-order." But uh, no, I, it all depends on if I can pre-order it and if I can secure my, you know, my unit, so to speak. Like if I I'm not able to pre-order it, and then my chances of getting it on launch day are significantly less. And then if, when it does come out, I'm not able to just go to the store and pick one up or whatever. That all that, that can kind of sour everything in terms of getting it on launch day. I would prefer to be able to get it at launch day, but if I got to wait a couple weeks, month, whatever, that's fine. But I just want to know how much it's going to be, when it's coming out, and when I can pre-order it. That's it. Everything else is just extra shit, you know? Um, new games, any more, you know, release dates for games, that's all cool. No, I need to know about the hardware. I, I want to know when, all that stuff. That's what I want to know. Make it five minutes, just tell me. When, we're, I mean, we're all, it's it's safe to say it's happening before the holiday season. Clearly. I would say it's going to be November. It's Or at the very earliest, it will be mid to late October, but my assumption will be probably sometime in November is the safest bet because they want to give it enough time to hype it up, get that, first wave of units sold through and then say, and then make that big push for Christmas. I'm thinking it's going to be the second week of November. So yeah, I think that was when the, the last, I think that was when the four came out, it was like November 14th or something like that. So it was like 
just it was it was not it was like basically like coming up on like Black Friday, but enough time that people had time to prepare. But then I remember when it launched, people were like, "Do you think they're going to discount it for Black Friday?" And the answer is unequivocally, no. fucking no. Are you no. are you being serious? <laughs> what? No, they just turned this shit out. They're not going to take fifty bucks off of it. They might do a bundle deal where they say, "Hey." You buy the console and like five controllers will give you this game for free, maybe, but it's not going to be like they're going to take $50 off the console or a hundred bucks. No, they're going to want you to spend more money. So, so what I guess, I guess my, my big question is if they don't announce the price tag or the release date, August 6th, if they have this next uh, state of play, where like, I mean, now now we're looking at not not getting this information until September, and now you're going to give us two months to save. Like, don't they kind of? Ha- I feel like they don't have an option, but they kind of have to give you some sort of price tag uh, at this next state of play. Like, I well, I, I mean, if you're just if you're just starting to wait to save now, you probably failed. I'll just say that if you're if you're sitting here, we're basically we're it's almost August now. It's going to be August next Correct. week. Like we're, we're, we're there. If you haven't, if you said, I want the PlayStation five or I want the Xbox series X. And at this point you haven't started saving for it. You might have, you're probably going to have a bad time. You know, you probably should have had the foresight to start saving probably within the last year, even just like $10 a week or something like that. If you haven't started saving at this point and you know, money's tight and budgeting and so on, you're probably going to have a bad time coming up with, let's just say $500 in three months or four months. Yeah. I That's mean, just me though. I mean, I've been saving for this since the four came out, so I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I just have to slap the car down and I'm <laughs> fucking set. But the, the good, the good thing though, I will say with what, you know, with the new, with the PS five and even the Xbox series X is like, Obviously, they're all coming out around, um, like we've kind of said, assuming the end of October, beginning of November. The games that they have coming out around that time are, you know, are good. So it's not like it's not like you're going to get invest in a new box and have nothing to play. Like there's going to be plenty of stuff that you can play, especially if you have the ability to do backwards compatibility with uh, the PS4. Obviously, the Xbox has the Game Pass thing that it does. But, yeah. um, you know, I think luckily that is on their favor, you know, especially with cyberpunk coming out in November as well. Te- technically it could be a launch title for both consoles easily. Um, and probably realistically will be, if you break it down, if you say within a month span, you know, you also have the Assassin's Creed, but I think black flag kind of did the same thing. It kind of crossed over between PS3 and PS4. It did. So um, it, it'll be, it'll be great. Like I said, I think it's a good time to be a nerd and uh mm-hmm. And, you know, it's going to be fun. So, but all right. Well, before we get into our low key favorite games, uh, let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Why am I a nerd podcast network has been brought to you by our sponsor. Me moms, the best breakfast and lunch down the Jersey shore with three great locations in wall township, Middletown and brick, New Jersey. Me mom specializes in unique and fun takes on your traditional lunch and breakfast items. Open seven days a week from 8am to 3pm. You can find more information at www.memoms.com. And we're back. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> so, all right. So today we're going to be putting together. At first, I said guilty pleasures, but we 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 rechanged the name to just our yeah. low key favorite five low key favorite games that we, you know, have loved to play. And you know, I think we all probably definitely have a different um, list here. I could safely say. Mm-hmm. So we're going to go around the room one game at a time. So, uh, Jason, you want to start first? Uh, sure. I am a huge fan of a little known game called Minecraft. If I ever want to just completely What's leave. Minecraft about? <laughs> <laughs> what is I've never heard of this. If I ever just want to completely waste like three and a half hours, I will just sit down and then it just goes by like that. Um, really? I just wander in there aimlessly. I'll just build something, I'll tear it down, I'll build something new, I'll go exploring. Um, that's one of my guilty little pleasure games where I just, I like it. I know it's it's cheap, it's cheesy, it's chintzy, but there's something about it that just does it for me and I love it. Did you get dungeons? No. 
I know that some people in that Minecraft stuff, and I've seen some of the stuff that people build. Like the, you're like freaking what? What's it called? Hodsworth? Hodsworth? I don't. I'm not a Harry Potter guy. Like yeah. someone built like the Harry Potter castle in like in in Minecraft, which is like yes. it blows my mind that the shit people, people doing do in that game. Cities. It's nuts. Yeah. Cities. Yep. But can you go? I, I've never played Minecraft. I've never even jumped in the world of it. Can you go to other people's like kind of like? Uh, was it Animal Crossing? You can go to some dump different people's islands. Can you go to different worlds, or is it you're locked in yours? Yeah, so there is online. Um, mm. I mean, th- there are some you can jump on other people's servers as so long as you know you're whitelisted. Some of them might have you know anybody comes in. Some might need to be specifically invited. Your permissions as far as it, can you build? Can you what okay. can you interact with? What can you build? What can you destroy? Will be different. But yeah, it just all depends on finding the the right one. Because I know a lot of people with Fallout Four. People were building some crazy ass shit in that game with their yep. town, and then, but I mean, nothing yeah. compared to uh, obviously compared to Minecraft. But uh, yeah, I think that's a that's a good. I was not expecting that. That's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one, Matt. You're up. Oh, okay. So I got. I'm gonna I'm gonna start and like I'm gonna work my way backwards in time. I guess. Okay. I'll kind of flip flop in time. Uh, low key favorite. I I don't. I I really liked it, and I I what I when it was announced and the trailers and everything, I was like. I'm going to fucking hate this game, but I actually ended up really liking it was DMC devil may cry. Oh, what? When they did that, re- I actually really liked that shit. It was pretty good. I mean, I was expecting to be like, oh, fucking Dante is an angsty teen or whatever and all the shit. No, it was actually really good. And I kind of feel bad that they aren't exploring more of that um, version of them, but no, I actually really liked that game. I-, I expected to fucking hate it and say, this is garbage, but I really liked it. So that's they, a little one of my first low key fades. That that game reminded me a lot of like what they do with Prince of Persia when they remade it with yeah. like the, the shell shade, uh, cell shaded, shaded version. Yeah, it was like I remember when I when I saw that game come out, I was like, wait, what? Like, is this Devil May Cry one? Re, like, what are they? I didn't play it. Um, yeah, because I was skeptical about it, and I'm not a big Devil May Cry guy. I don't like how after each level you get ranked. I, it just causes me anxiety because I suck at those type of games. Anytime I get ranked in something, I want to fucking throw my controller because i'm so <laughs> bad at it um but was was that game just like a rip from the first original one or was it like a whole different no it was like they said they like, was essentially like they were like no that they're they were going to try to reboot the entire devil may cry series from the ground up and then they tried it and i guess they did didn't work out because just you know within the last year or so devil may cry 5 came out mm-hmm. and it continues on that same story but no they were trying to reboot it Try to do something different, you know, so same f- same character Dante and all that shit, and like half demon, half angel, all that nonsense shit, um, or half human, whatever. But they were trying to reboot it, and it, I actually really liked it. I, I didn't, so did I didn't five? Did five <clears throat> follow the DMC all or the did it previous? All the, pre- the original no, it ones followed all of the previous okay. Devil May Cry games. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, so I'm going way back to 1993 on this one, which this is a game Ooh, that I wow. have played through probably 100,000 times, and I have it on all my emulators. I even think I have it on my Switch, is Sega's Gunstar Heroes. That's a good one. That game is yeah. fucking wow. so much fun. I love that game. <laughs> I love playing with two players. I always get the same power-up when you mix the blue laser and the yellow dot thing, or what green dot things, and it makes this thing where just like you hold the button, it just kills everybody inside. You don't have to hit a button, just run through it. <laughs> uh, if anyone doesn't know what that is, it's pretty much a side scroller, just like any 1993 game was. Uh, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, I guess, like Mega Man, when you get like different weapons and blasters and stuff like that, and you can combine weapons to make other power ups. There's, it's, I think it's like two brothers, one's like a red dude, one's a blue dude co-op a lot of fun i think it's on nintendo switch because i believe i have it if i don't have it i know i have it on my sega and i have it on all my little emulator things so if you haven't checked that game out fucking check it out grab some couch co-op grab a box of a uh, doritos and the snicker bar and box you're, good, of you're, doritos. Good, you're good to go <laughs> <laughs> box of bag doritos. of doritos bag of spicy doritos <laughs> and we're good so all right jason you're up all right, I'm uh, talk about low key. This is actually a text based game that has been around for I want to say oh. 28 years, 29 years. It's called Gemstone. Um, so there's no graphics. I've heard of it. Everything, everything is text based. So it's uh, typical medieval fantasy. So think Dungeons and Dragons, Dragonlands, Dragon Realm. Your flavor was when you were growing up, whatever you followed. Um, so everything is text-based 
So instead of, you know, moving your character over and pressing X to swing a sword or casting a spell, you're actually going and, you know, typing attack monster, and then you'll have hidden rolls. Um, very, very imaginative game. Um, it's been around for, I've got 28, 29 years at this point. It's in its fourth iteration. Um, surprisingly large player base for what it is. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely worth worth checking out uh, if you have the imagination for it. It it just you're this is wild. You're this visualizing is everything in your mind as what you're doing. There's a bit of a learning curve on it, but it is much easier to pick up now than it was even you know 15 years ago. Um, love it. It's one of my go tos when I just had a long day and I just go and sit and play. So, cause I'm looking at the screen here now, like you see like a kind of like a person's body on the top middle of the thing, I guess that's like, so this, this literally lo looks like coding. It like, I, I don't yeah. even know, like this is, I wouldn't even know how to get started on this. Yeah. This is definitely a <laughs> gem. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. It's, it's great. I've been playing for a lot longer than I would like to admit to. Let's just say <laughs> that Sumitronics, the, the company that creates it, they've uh they've paid for their ceos have paid for a few cars just from me so <laughs> I, i've been playing this game for a long time so how do you progress in the game so you level up just like anything else only you're not you know you you train in certain things it's not like you level up and you get this and you automatically get this you can actually train to let's say you want to be a typical wizard you would train in magical arts let's say you wanted to be a, a warrior wizard you would train in weapon skills and spells that would increase your strength and your haste and you would basically just be like a little ninja running around casting spells and then swinging a sword um you want to play a cleric do you want to be a good cleric do you want to be a good priest do you want to be a bad priest do you want to do you know holy unholy it's entirely up to you the custom uh, customization in this is literally whatever you can think of there is a way to do it it definitely Pretty looks sweet. interesting did you see it matt did you pull it up or no yeah well that's why i've been kind of I've been oh, looking yeah. just at little bits of it uh, looks good to me way over my head but yeah <laughs> check it out if you're into uh if you can imagine it kind of looks like even like a card game of some sort like you like we, when you play like a card game you have to kind of imagine it and it was like really in-depth mm -hmm. shit but matt you're up um, so it's not really one game. It's more of a series of them and there'll be a kind of another one of these coming up. Um, but they were on game boy, like the original game boy. And then I think they moved to game boy color. Um, I really fucking love them. Uh, the Wario land games. I don't know if you ever played yep. them. Those games were fucking sweet, dude. I loved it. Cause it was just, it's, it's hard to just describe. Like they just took that character of Wario. You still did the side by side scrolling, but like the whole point of the game was to just like, collect shit tons of treasure and stuff like that and just get rich and I, I just i had so much fun playing those games like you instead of like you know mario would get his power-ups or like the fire flower and stuff like that wario would get like different helmets where he could like he had like bull horns and he could like charge it or he would get one where it was like a, a bird helmet but it like he made, it made him fly like he had like a jet helmet it was so bizarre but I absolutely adored playing those games. I don't think I played all of them, but I played the majority of them. Um, just fucking awesome games. Super low-key. I really feel like not not too many people probably have ever even heard of them. Not exactly um, what you're talking about. Right when yeah, you said it. Right uh, when you heard of Warrior, I was so like, that's good. it. That's <laughs> so it. So good, man. The, the, only, the, the, the one Mario game, I will say this is not on my list because I rage quit it the other, like, literally, I, I it was Super Mario Land 2. I got to the final fucking boss... I if you don't Force, beat the boss, whatever his name is, yeah, if you don't beat Force, the boss yeah. or the last level, all the worlds that you or the the worlds, I guess you could say, you take and get the coins gets wiped out, and you have to restart the entire thing. I was like, fuck this! I had like thirty lives, blew through thirty lives, couldn't get to it. So fuck you, Mario Land Two for Game Boy, <laughs> you son of a bitch. Um. All right, so I'm going to go to an arcade game because this is the one arcade game that when I see it, I play it no matter what, and you're not taking me off it, is The Simpsons. Turtles. Oh, I was going to oh, say it was yeah. The Simpsons. Simpsons I, <laughs> I will mark my words. 
I have it on yeah, my. Like I have it. Cabinet. I will. Ha- I will find the cabinet. I will buy the cabinet. I will buy the four person cabinet. I will not buy an emulated version of it. I will one day find a way to get it. Um, I do have it on my. I have a tabletop, uh, like a cocktail table arcade machine in my cigar room, and I have it on there. But unfortunately, it only plays two players because it's tabletop, so people sit on, like the weird sides. Um, but yeah. that game, I go to that no matter what. It's the first thing I look for whenever I go to an, an arcade, um, any sort of arcade place or Dave and Buster's. I think sometimes they have it or the place in uh, Red Bank has it. I was going to say, that, I remember I when love we, were, that game. we were loaded at Vitality's yep. bachelor party and we fucking played that game from start to finish. <laughs> yep, that game is fucking so much fun. I, I don't understand why they were never able to to match what they did in that any other time. Some people say, mm-hmm. you know, the Simpsons hit and run is like, it's not even the same game. People say like that's mm-hmm. the next like be- best thing they did, but I mean I liked Bart's Nightmare. That was a fun game too. But um, I like Virtual Bart. I don't. I you don't. played Virtual Bart on Sega. Was it Virtual Bart on Sega? Uh, yeah, Bart's- where you like you like your Bart, but you're like a dinosaur, and then your Bart, but you're like or like you're like little baby Bart, and you're swinging from fucking trees, dude. I I have to send this to you. Hold on. Keep keep talking. I gotta no. find this link. So, but yeah. So this oh, game, man. I love this game. I think it's awesome. You know, I like how you said turtles first. No, that was not that was not it. But uh, I love the Simpsons. I really hope that maybe one day I'll be able to. Like I said, I will own that that freaking cabinet and that, move cabinet. on with my life. So, oh, Jason, man. you're up. All right. So going to a PC game here. Um, oh. There is a game i want to say this was back in 99 maybe 2000 2001 uh it was a star trek game called klingon academy now every star trek game before that was always you know you were flying around as kirk or picard you were doing whatever you were saving the galaxy klingon academy was you basically were a klingon and you went and you just wrecked the Federation. Um, <laughs> nice. You were in close ships. You were just doing hit and run missions. You were taking out Constitution. Fucking Star Trek out. GTA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you just wrecked them and you had special missions. So some of them were stealth where you used your, you know, you were in your cloaked ship and you were just going and gathering data. Some were, you were, uh, some missions were, you would go and eliminate targets. Other missions, you would just go and like, fly through Federation space, find a group of ships, decloak, let them know you're there, then cloak and fly off and do it again to put fear in the heart of the Federation. Um, if you've ever seen Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, um, it was basically the video game sequel to that. A lot of the, uh, the same voice actors did a lot of the stuff in it, um, mm-hmm. and it kind of tied into that movie, even though it was... I don't know, 10 years later at that point. Um, so much you, fun, Jason, though. Sorry. So much fun playing the bad guy. Um, so much fun just going in and just wrecking, you know, Federation ships left and right. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. I like the PC pickup there. This game, I'm going to go find this fucking game and I'm going to buy this. I'm talking about this freaking virtual BART. I'm gonna go buy this game and I'm gonna freaking figure. I'm out. so I'm <laughs> so happy that you're you. I like I can't believe you weren't aware of this. <clears throat> um, I I feel like I've it's, played it's this. Fucking incredible. I, it scored terribly back in the day, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, but who gives a shit? Like, there's one where you're walking around as Bart, but you're like a fucking Bart, like a raptor with like a Bart head on it. And there's one where you're like Bart as an infant, but you're like trying to escape the house, so you have to like swing from trees. It's the weirdest game, but I love it. <laughs> shit out of that God. game. Yeah, um, Matt, so you're I. Matt, you're up. Aren't you up? No. Oh, yeah, yeah you did. Turn. You did. Yeah, you did. Um, oh, okay. So, Cameron, I know we've had a lot of conversations about this one in the past. I, I think I'm remembering this right. We're gonna go to. We're gonna go to. Actually, wait, no. I'll save this one for later. Okay. We'll keep. I'll keep with the Sega. Uh, we were talking about it this morning. Echo the Dolphin. <laughs> yeah. I love those games, dude. Yeah. I love, dude. I just low key like love those fucking games. I love Echo. I know they did one for PS2. But I never played it. But I'm just talking about the Sega ones. Those games were so You cool. weren't missing much for the PS2. It was uh, okay. All right, I'm glad weird. to know that that sucked. It okay. was kind of like an overhead, and then a 3D. It was the gameplay was all weird. weird. I didn't Sega understand that game. Like, like, what did you do? You shot. I like I couldn't figure out what you just like went. I, I don't know. You 
could literally beat the original Echo game in less than an hour if you knew what you were doing. But yeah, it was just like, I, I first, I remember being a kid and being like, so what, you just swim around as a dolphin and that's it? But then there's this, the, the story behind it is, you know, like, I don't know if it's on Earth or some other planet or whatever. And like dolphins were taken there by aliens and there's aliens in the game. There's like weird alien spaceships and shit. It's crazy. The game's just so good. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this piggybacking on Sega. Then I'm gonna stick. Well, yeah. with the two now. No, I'm gonna stick with the two now because I actually had this. Oh. Seg- I had another Sega one, and I think so. I might argue. Someone might argue with me that the first one's better, but I like this one. It is none other than Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck World of Illusions. I have no idea what that is. I don't think I've ever played. What? Played. What? Yeah, I don't oh think I played my that. God, it's so much fun. How have you? It's like a. It's like it, it's you play in two players. Um, I guess. Is there a Darkwing Duck game too for Sega? I don't know. I've only played because you had you have World of Illusions. I which, think there was one for Nintendo. Yeah, that's called. That um, might have been it. Yeah. No, the, the Nintendo one is uh, Castle of Illusion. Castle. I know that one. Oh, Castle okay. Illusion. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. for Sega. So Castle of Illusions is for Sega. Then they had a the sequel to Sega again, which was uh, World of Illusions. Have you never played this game? It was like... I don't think I've... Oh, I gotta look this oh up. I don't God. think I ever played it, but maybe I did and I blocked it out of my memory for some reason. It's World so much Illusions. fun. You, you, you're literally... It's, it's co-op. You play as Mickey and Donald. It's like almost... It's like... I've it's literally cool. never seen this in my entire life. What? Oh, no dude, I I can play this game for fucking hours upon hours. It's just so <laughs> stupidly fun. And I, man, I used to... Uh, I'm looking at the screenshots now because it's been a hot minute since I played it. But even like, yeah, the, you, you never, you don't remember when you had to fight this huge spider thing, or you go in the the carpet. Oh my dude, no, just go. No way. I gave you an emulator if you still have it. Just plug it in one day and fucking play it. It's funny. After I texted you about Echo this morning, I went, "Oh man, I'd love to play that again." And then I went, "Fuck, I had that Raspberry Pi that Cameron gave me. I should totally just hook this shit up and get going." Yeah, dude, this game was a <sighs> lot of this game was a lot of fun. I I, I really enjoyed this game, and I. Uh, I like how we're keeping it to old school nostalgia games and we're not really moving too much ahead of time, even though I do have one on my list that's ahead of time. But Jason, you're yeah. up. All right. Um, I am actually keeping this with Sega Genesis. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> we must have been Sega kids growing up because no one yeah. said We all, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I didn't have Super Nintendo. It was Sega. A game called Shining Force. So there yes. were two of them. Yes. Um, the yes, first one was yes. Death. Um, that was actually one of the games that really got me into gaming. It was all mm-hmm. turn based, and uh, oh. yeah, that was that was great. I mean, it had thirty playable characters you could build your party from, and each one of them had different things. You had the knights, you had uh, you know the the, the magic users and the healers, um, but turn based for the time it was. It wasn't open world as we see it today, but I think um, back then the battlefields where you could go anywhere on the battlefields and plan your attack from any area, I think that was kind mm-hmm. of like open world 1.0. Yeah, it looks really cool. <clears throat> it looks good for a freaking Sega game too. Like just looking at like the, uh, you know, it, I'm actually surprised by how how good it looks. Yeah, I uh, I've played I played that game through many many times the second one was okay um you know same format larger scale um but it didn't have the magic that the the first one did but both both very good games in their own right and there was a third non-official sequel um shining in the darkness i think it was shining for cd shining for well that was for sega cd but there was or they had um, one for sega saturn too okay yeah, there, there was another game with a different name, but it was kind of like an unofficial sequel. I think it was Shining in the Darkness, but not nearly as good as as the two Shining Force. Which you can actually, if anyone wants to play this game, if you have a PS3 or an Xbox 360, it's apparently it's on the yeah. Sonic yes, Ultimate Genesis is. collections. Yes. Um, and then they had a Shining Force Resurrection of the Dark Dragon. That's the Game Boy Advance version. And then there was one that was supposed to come out in 2010 for iOS, but was it was released, but they discontinued it in 2015. Mm. So. Matt? Oh, fuck me again already? Um, okay, so this is the one that I was going to say before the Echo the Dolphin camera, and I know we've talked about this one before. 
N64. Now this is this is where I'm capping out. My next two are both N64 games. Jet Force Gemini. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes. The fucking I dog with the machine gun on his back. Or Dude, there was a <laughs> dog with a machine gun and rockets on his back <laughs> yeah. and had like little jet packs in his feet. And you're fighting like bugs. It was like weird. Like you're fighting like giant ants as enemies. That game was incredible. It was like the, it was like a, what was that stupid bug movie? It's like Starship oh, Troopers. Starship with like Troopers. PG, yeah, like, <laughs> dude, there's different kinds of bugs, but they're yeah. like invading planets. Live where like Ewok people live from Star Wars, and they're just like it's like this weird like genocidal bug race that's trying to exterminate all these little Ewok people, and then you're trying to save them because you're part of some like space federation it was so cool i i love that game so much when i was a kid you got some cl- just crazy weapons you're running around with machine guns and pistols and sniper rifles just like super cartoony i think it was one of the last good games made by rare too so um, jeff for gemini yeah. uh, i yes. don't know man cocker's live and reload is pretty fucking good i don't know not as Come good as on. the first one but still not as good as the first one but still good okay all right, all right, I'll give I'll give you that. So mm-hmm. the next one on my list, I'm actually going with, and this is because this this game, this actually started. If anyone doesn't know, uh, Sean, who's also on the uh, Fourth and One show, and my business partner and me moms, there's our pitch, and you actually got word from the sponsor earlier. Our friendship started because of this game, which was none other Whoa. than Mar- Marvel Ultimate Alliance for the oh. PSP. Oh, for the PSP. Yeah, that's how Sh- Sean and I became friends because of that game in wow. high school and that game is i like the game a lot i will say i might like x-men legends a little better um only Not because special. you get to only because, what is saying that, that that's x-men legends more than uh well Marvel. only because i i'm a huge gambit fan and i feel like besides the x-men game for sega which you can play mm-hmm. as Gambit. And I think I think there's one for SNES too that you can play as Gambit. Uh, you really don't get to play as him ever. So I, I enjoy playing him because he's like my favorite character. So, uh, But this game was awesome. I know that they had the new one that came out this was last year for Switch, this year for Switch, the Black I Order, so. how it was called, or Dark Order, something order. Um, I, I didn't have interest in it, unfortunately. I mean, I know they're adding, I don't know if they did already, but uh, they're supposed to be adding the Punisher to that game. And if he is in it, I will probably pick it up if it goes on sale because again they had a punisher game for the ps2 i think it was and it was not great but it was a fun time to play uh used to pretty much threw people in wood chippers and whatnot it was but um yeah so marvel ultimate alliance is my uh is my fourth game so all right jason your last one what do you got so it's interesting you mentioned uh, X-Men for Genesis a minute ago because I also love that game. I also love playing as Gambit. And that was actually on the list of... Was it really? Yeah. Hey! Um, that, that and the X-Men arcade game. Yes! yes. Uh, going back to the Simpsons yes. arcade, the X-Men arcade was, was you could play as uh, Colossus. Mm-hmm. Uh, Storm. Mm-hmm. Storm, Dazzler. Um, Wolverine. And yeah. Cyclops? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the one for Genesis was was great. Um, there was two. You had the regular one and you had Clone Wars. No, I, I'm talking like the original one. It came out in like 93. The, the, like, yeah, like the super side OG one. Between Wolverine, yep. Gambit. Um, like the, first, could, the first level, you're in like a cell. Form. Yeah, you could call in Storm and stuff like the the other ones to get, like for boss fights and everything, but mm-hmm. you couldn't control them. Um, my final one, I'm actually going to have to go with something called Flower. Um, Flower, I is love Flower. A very unique game. There's no monsters to fight. There's no enemies. There's nothing to to get away from. Um, if you need to relax at the end of a day. This is the game for you. You are literally a leaf on the wind. Mm -hmm. Um, You actually, there's barely even any buttons to press. You just use the the motion, the six axis motion sensor in the controller. And you are literally a leaf on the wind. And you just fly around. Um, You basically hit as many flowers as you can. After you get like a certain amount, a different area will unlock. And part of it is very fast paced. If you get a gust of wind, you're going through it at like sonic speeds. Um, but the game never 
gives you a sense of anxiety. It just brings your stress level all the way down. And it is visually beautiful to look at, very uh, relaxing to listen to. And that is definitely one of my guilty pleasure games that I go to. Isn't this similar to Journey? Wasn't yeah. Journey kind of the same? Similar same to the yes. Yep. I knew it looked uh, I knew it looked familiar from looking at it. I wanted to play Journey, but I was like, after watching some gameplay, I was like, eh, I might fall asleep playing this. Or it had to be fun. That, that's the point of it. That's the point of flower. Yeah. It relax you, take all that stress away, and just get you ready for bed to where you put your head down and you are out cold. Hmm. Journey was a bit more there is a bit more thought process to Journey, I wanna say. Um, mm-hmm. you, know, you could get damaged by certain things, but, uh, yeah, both, both good games. Check them out. All right, Matt, your last one. What do you got? Yeah. So it's, it's a combination of, I guess, a series, a whole series, but two specific games that were on the N64. And I guess what you could say is my, this would be my guilty pleasure, but it was only because growing up, my brother was a total asshole and made me feel <laughs> like bad for wanting to, for like wanting me these games and enjoying them. Um, I don't know if either way yet. Mystical Ninja starring Goemon. That's the little blue guy. Like, he's got the blue hair. He's got yes. Like blue okay. Hair. Yeah. So the, they, they did one for, I mean, they were like NES games and then they were Super Nintendo games but they did one for N64 and I remember seeing it and just being like, wow, this game looks like so much fun from the cover art and then playing it and just absolutely falling in love with just the, just it's so wacky and zany and just the, just weird, like Japanese anime humor and shit from like the early nineties. And then they made a sequel to it. And the sequel was a little different because like the first one, it's kind of open with sort of open world. And then the second one they did it, it felt almost like Mario where you're like moving on a grid to like different areas. But then when you get into the areas, they're a little bit more open and it was a side scroller. But I absolutely loved those games. But the, I felt guilt when I was younger for playing them because my brother was such an asshole about it. And then now I wear it as a badge of honor that I played those games and I know what they are and I know the characters and the series. I just, I love, I love that that series and i want them to make more of those games but i just don't think the world cares so much about them anymore which makes me sad so you don't think you you, you could probably find I, I would say like it could be on a like a switch would probably pull off put, put it off pretty well if they pour if they were like yeah hey we're porting all those games to the switch i would be there day one i would buy if there was a collector's edition i would buy that um but just so much fun just i really i really fucking love those games i would love to be able to play them like remastered or just just modernized i guess Hmm. so big fan all right so my last one should come as no surprise to anybody because i've been talking about this game pretty much since the start of this show happened no god it's fucking coming out in september is none other the Kingdom of, <laughs> Kingdom of Avalor. <laughs> yes. Duh. I saved it for last. Kingdom of Avalor. I tell everybody Duh. about it. No, everyone's like, well, it's a cool game, it seems like. In my opinion, it is the Fable on PlayStation. I mean, yeah, it comes out. It's on Xbox. But you could pl- this is like, if you want to play Fable and you don't own a freaking Xbox, pick this game up, play it. It's coming out. It's awesome. It's fun. I played it three times over. Do I know what's going on in it? Absolutely not. I have no idea what's happening, what's going on in the fucking game. But it's just a game. It's stupid fun. Um, I think the classes are generic. It's nothing, you know, nothing reinvents the wheel. But some of the weapons you can get are pretty cool and how you can kind of modify the classes and you can actually change them kind of on the fly. You're not stuck with one, which is, you know, cool as well. You might adapt your character one way and then be like, oh, shit, I want to play this other. You could do that. But it's a great game. It's super fun. I love it. And it is my last game that everyone should go check out. So, but one one game I do want Garbage. to shout out. We'll never shut play the fuck it. Up. It's terrible. <laughs> it's terrible. I will never shut play up. it. One game I do want to shout out uh, because this game just needs to get remastered already and remade. And I don't know what you're waiting for, Capcom. It's none other than Dino Crisis. Just remake it. Okay. No, no, that would be that could that could really benefit from like a Resident Evil Two remake exactly. style. Just yeah. do it. I mean, you, sure. have the, you have this weird dinosaur shooter game coming out, so, but I don't know. 
Anywho, once again, this is Why Am I Nerd presents Alpha Beta Gold Games. You can follow us on Instagram at Why Am I Nerd Official, Facebook.com slash Why Am I Nerd, and listen to new episodes every Monday on YouTube and your favorite podcast service. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining. As always, Jason, much. it was great having you say. Just thank Matt. You. Always a pleasure. Just Matt. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. So until next time, we're out.